Hey everybody and thank you so much for joining me today here on Blind Whiskey Reviews. As promised, I am bringing you the five bonus shootouts from the Distillery Wars series. If you didn't catch it, I talked about it quite a bit in the live stream wrap up I did. I'll link that up here if you want to check it out. But there was a snafu with the bracket which caused me to have to shoot a bunch of extra footage of shootouts, some of which I needed, some of which I didn't. So I've got a bunch of extra shootouts, five in total, coming your way between the same iconic whiskeys we've had in our Distillery Wars series. So hopefully you guys will enjoy these. This same clip of video is going to lead in every video to explain it. So you, if you see this again, don't worry. It's not deja vu. You have not necessarily seen this before. It's the, I'm using the same clip of video to lead into all five shootouts. Hopefully you enjoyed the Distillery War series. I will link the playlist up here in case you didn't catch it and you're just catching this one. Hopefully you enjoy all the bonus footage and let's get to the shootout. Let's get into it. Starting with whiskey number five. Big pop of like red fruit right up front. Lighter fruits, caramel, vanilla. And the shootout is, while they're all different distilleries and there's some notes that kind of maybe give certain distilleries away, it is, all these bourbons really kind of stay or at least they have aspects of them that are really in the same lane of this like very standard, very well-made bourbon realm. Like that, just the very up the middle bourbon. Now some of them have some outlying flavors and characters to them that really make them interesting and fantastic whiskeys, but they all kind of have this, this very stable, delicious backbone of just a very solid bourbon, which makes this a little more difficult because it means they've got very, there's similarities in each whiskey. This one stays much more in the light fruit realm on the nose up front. There's some berry characters in there. It's almost like a slightly floral note right now. You definitely got your vanilla in there as well. So both are smelling pretty good. Let's get on to the taste of number five. Get one more taste before you start getting some notes in. Hmm. So this one gives you a little pop of like light fruit up front on the front of the palate. Mid palate really switches to like these red kind of berry characters with some caramel. Almost like a caramel apple. A little vanilla, a little bit of bitterness in the back end. Stays a, a nice balance of bitter and sweet on the back end too. Mouth feels about medium, um, not harsh and burning. So this feels like maybe one of our 90 proof offerings or thereabout. Get a little water. All right, moving on to number seven. This one just has a deeper, darker, richer nose right now. Yeah, definitely more deep and dark on the palate as well. Definitely in the, the dark fruit realm, black cherry, plum, black currant, dark brown sugar, vanilla, tobacco, bitter dark chocolate. Stay sweet though. Um, again, pretty similar to this in the sense that it's like nicely balanced between bitter and sweet as it goes over the end of the palate. So it's not overly bitter, it's not cloyingly sweet, it's just a, it's well balanced there. Mouthfeel is a little bit richer than this one. It's a little bit you know, a high end of medium, a little bit more thick, a little more viscous, a little bit more, the flavor's a little bit more powerful. These are both good whiskeys, so 
as we've been doing. You got my initial tasting notes. I'm going to go back and forth between these whiskeys a little bit, decide which one I like better, take a few more notes, and come back to you with my decision on which of these whiskeys wins the day. So I'll be right back with that. So for me right now, having gone back between these whiskeys a little bit, it's pretty clear for me which one's the winner. So <clears throat> over here, you've got just so much deep, rich, robust character. You've got a ton of deep, dark sweetness, and it almost has this like cherry cola flavor to it. It really tastes amazing. Number five stays a little bit lighter, a little bit um, light fruits, standard bourbon characters. It's very solid, very good. It just doesn't quite have the complexity or the robust qualities that number seven does, and it has a little bit of a harshness to it. Just, I mean, not a lot, nothing that's overly off-putting, nothing that makes it hard to drink, but it's just it's got a little bit of bite on that tongue, whereas this one is incredibly smooth and has more flavor. And again, by smooth, which is a word everybody apparently hates, but smooth to me means it's just easy drinking over the palate, doesn't have those harsh, bitey characters, um, but it just packs a punch of flavor. It is just fantastically rich. So I think it's pretty clear. Today, for me, number seven moves on in our shootout. Whether that be into uh, seventh place or up in the loser's bracket or ascending the, the, the winner's bracket. So it could be any of these things. So as I always ask, let me know in the comments down below, did I get this right for you? Do you which one of these whiskeys do you think you would have chosen to win? Um, to me, this one was pretty clear. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't incredibly close. Seven really just went out. It was just so much more rich, robust, complex, and just fantastically balanced. So which one do you think should have won? Leave a comment down below. As always, you can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at blind underscore reviews. You can catch me on Instagram at mission bottle kill, and you can send me an email at blindwhiskeyreviews at gmail.com. And until next time, cheers. Mm -hmm.